Hi, this is Russ Emanis, uh, here to visit with you today at Anegra on how to properly infuse with Anegra fabrics. Uh, as you can see, I've got my bag already done here today. It's the same basic type of uh, bagging process that you typically would use. There's a lot of different ways to uh, pull vacuum uh, out of the bag and introduce resin to the bag. In this particular case, for this small part, I chose to go from the top. Uh, for both the feed line and the vacuum line. A couple things I want to go through with you real quick is uh, the basic building of a bag. I know that most of you have built bags before, but just to go back through it so you know how I built this bag. Um, I always start out with a nice tacky tape. This is a high temp tape. Uh, I usually build my perimeter before I ever do my layups just so I can prevent any, any fuzz or fibers from the fabric uh, causing uh, air leaks underneath the the uh, tacky tape. Secondly is I did my layup and in this case for this test specimen uh, we use three plies of, of fabric. One one ply of 100% 2 by 2 twill Anegra. A second ply of a plain weave glass Anegra blend. And a third ply again of a 2 by 2 twill Anegra fabric. Uh, the reason for this particular layup is to show you how simple it really is to infuse with an agra. There's no real complexities that you don't normally run into. Obviously, we want to make sure that we have vacuum integrity. You want to do a good leak down. You want to make sure that you left your part under vacuum long enough to evacuate any moisture that may have accumulated on your fabrics prior to laying them up. Uh, and you want to use the proper uh, peripheral support items around it. I've found that the MTI hose from German Advanced Composites uh, absolutely helps in the infusion of Anegra products. This allows me to maintain a bag at a phenomenal tension across the entire face of the part, opposed to uh, losing some of the resin to the bleed line. Uh, MTI hose is basically a spiral cut tube inside a one-way uh, bleeder. And then obviously we finish up with, uh, with building a bag. I like to use a product from AirTech. This particular one is called Big Blue. It's a uh, four mil bag, so it's uh, plenty thick uh, and it's got good elongation. So, okay, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about calculating for your, your part. Um, as with every infusion, uh, and really almost any type of composites we do. We try to do as best planning as we can. Uh, some of the things that are super important to keep in mind with Inegra is that because it's a hydrophobic fiber, it doesn't uh, absorb resin. We have to encapsulate the resin. We have to kind of consider that we're going to use a little bit more resin in the infusion than we typically would use if, say, if it was a glass part. So in doing that, you're looking at the volume that the material actually takes up, not the, the amount of resin it would take to wet it out. So a, a five ounce of material for a 50-50 resin ratio would not necessarily be five ounce of resin. <coughs> it's going to be somewhat higher than that depending on the laminate stack and where the material is located in the laminate. So if it's a negra by itself, you can plan on a little higher resin content just to ensure that you encapsulate the fiber. Furthermore, as with other infusions, you always want to take into consideration the annular volume of your tubing, which would be the ID by the, by the width uh, as part of your resin calculation. And in this case, I'm going to stop the infusion fairly short. Um, I like to, uh, when I do my infusions, stop my flow short and allow the, uh, the, the balance of the material to migrate through the part uh, keeping the bag as tight as possible to keep my resin content as low as possible. In this particular part, we've got a uh, medium green flow media. That medium green flow media is going to take approximately 600 grams per cubic meter, uh, square meter. Uh, so that's been, that's been put into our calculation today. So, without any further ado, let's go ahead and get this infusion rolling. Alright, one of the things that we want to look at real quick is let's take a quick look at our vacuum level. Uh, right here, we're showing that we're pulling full vacuum. I don't have a vent on this gauge, so there's no way for me to uh, 
neutralize the pressure inside the gauge. I know it based with on what we've got, I'm getting full atmospheric pressure today. All right, here we go. You notice how the resin jumped out and I'm slowing it down here with this MTI valve. As you, as you can see, I have a very consistent, smooth, straight uh, resin flow front that tells me that I don't have any leaks anywhere and that the MTI hose is doing its job. The MTI hose will allow resin to contact with it, but won't allow any resin to enter into it. This minimizes the amount of resin that we actually use in the infusion and reduces your waste. The further in you go with the infusion, the need for a quick bump, and then allow that to uh, go ahead and flow out. A very close look, uh, you can see that there's absolutely no air uh, or gas migration whatsoever within this, this infusion. This is telling me that even though we haven't used a veil on this particular part, which most of the times we do advocate, because we're using a glass surface where we have a very, very nice surface tension, we can get a very good finish on a 100% integral part against a premium surface. Uh, so in this instance, we chose not to use a veil so that at the end of the video, you can see that there are times that you can get away with making really nice parts without a veil. One such uh, uh, example would be for you to infuse a negra against say a clear coat or a gel coat. Just trying to manage the infusion here. And you can see that with these little MTI valves, uh, it makes managing your resin volume and your flow front very, very easy. You can do a quick bump and then you can slow it back down. Uh, and I think that we will call that that. Michael, would you just hold that bucket real quick? Just, just fingers, yeah. Okay. If you, and there we have it. Okay. Uh, yesterday we went through the infusion of the Negra without any veil on the face of it to uh, demonstrate that you can make a decent panel without running veil. Um, we like to see veil. I wanted to uh, emphasize that we like to see veil on most of the parts made with Enegra, particularly if the Enegra is close to the surface of the part. Again, I'll just touch on a couple of reasons why. Number one is a lot of people will try to abrade or sand the surface, and the Enegra will fuzz a little bit. So the veil protects that surface, goes transparent, and you get the value, the full value of the look of the Enegra if you're going for the aesthetics. If the Enegra is buried in a laminate, obviously the veil is not that critical as long as you're controlling the resin content. So let's have a look at what we made yesterday. Sealed the part. You can see that we're very, very uh, nicely wet out on the back side after the peel. Uh, and on, again, on the front side, you can see that our surface finish is, is almost perfect.